Oh, great! It's Minute Make Time! Here's what we're going to make today. It's an ugly rock. It's ugly, but it looks great. Just like me. <laughs> and to make an ugly rock, you will need a glue stick, a black pen, a pair of scissors, some white paper, a very small fluffy pom-pom, and a button. Now we'll also need a stone and some googly eyes. Now you can get these from an art and craft shop. I'll be back in a tick. I've got them. And here they are. There's our stone and our two googly eyes. Now, do you think it's possible to make this in just one minute? No way! Oh, well, I think I can do it, although I will have to be very quick. Don't worry, though, I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Let's make it in a minute! Get your clean rock and glue on some googly eyes like this. There's one eye. There's another one. There, two eyes. Now let's give him some funny hair with a pom-pom. Put plenty of glue on there and then stick that on. There we go. And then a nose with a button. There we go. Oh, it needs a bit more glue on the pom-pom. Go on, stick on. There we go. Now let's make a mouth by drawing a funny one on some white paper. Halfway there! There we go, like that. Now I'm going to cut this out very carefully with some scissors. Round there like that. Round and round we go. Don't forget scissors are sharp, so you can take a bit longer over that bit if you like. Now I need to get some glue and glue it on to the mouth of my ugly rock. I did it! Only just... With time to spare, actually, Toki. And if, like me, you've got more than a minute, you could paint your ugly rock a brilliant bright colour, like this green one. Or how about trying a yellow ugly rock with a square button for its nose? Or a blue ugly rock with a bigger pom-pom for its hair? Or why not try making a bigger ugly rock with more eyes and painted spots? Ugly rocks made in a minute. They're ugly, but beautiful. Why don't you try and make one? Here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. Glue the googly eyes onto a stone. Stick on a pom-pom for hair. And stick on a button for a nose. Draw and cut out a funny, ugly mouth and stick it onto your stone to finish your ugly rock. Why don't you try and make it in a minute? <laughs> now, take a look at this. This African sunset picture is great fun to do and looks so good you'll be able to frame it. You will need white paper, red paint, a paintbrush, a spoon, black and yellow oil pastels and water. Start by folding a piece of paper in half. Now draw a picture in oil pastels above the folded line of the paper. Draw the ground with a black oil pastel and then add a tree. As we're in Africa, let's draw two giraffes. For each one, draw a small head, a long neck, a body and four legs. Then draw the sun with a yellow oil pastel. Now for the really clever bit. We're going to make the bottom half of the picture look like a lake. First, fold the paper in half and then scrape along the back of it with a spoon. Unfold the paper to reveal a reflection of your drawing. Then choose a sunset-coloured paint like red and add water to it to make a watery mixture. Cover your picture with the mixture, making the top half slightly darker than the bottom half. It's a beautiful African sunset and the great thing is you only have to draw half of it. What a brilliant picture! Why don't you have a go? And then... Frame it! Isn't that effective? I like making art out of all sorts of things. So, now take a look at this. 
This brilliant sky picture is made by printing with a sponge and using lots of coloured wrapping paper. It's great fun to do and looks so good you'll be able to frame it. You will need some card, a sponge, light blue paint, scissors, a pencil, wrapping paper and some corrugated card. Start by drawing three cloud shapes on a piece of card and carefully cut them out. Stick the clouds onto white card with sticky tack. Then sponge blue paint all over the card, making sure you go over the edges of the cloud shapes. Now remove the cloud shapes to reveal a lovely sky. Next, draw three different sized balloon shapes on different coloured wrapping paper. Then carefully cut them out. To make the baskets, cut three different sized rectangles out of corrugated card. Now glue down the balloons with their baskets underneath. And join them together with a black pen. You can even add some birds in the sky, like this. Isn't that a great effect? Hot air balloons floating on a lovely day. What a brilliant picture! Why don't you have a go? And then... Frame it! Doesn't that look good? I like making pictures out of all sorts of things. So, now take a look at this. What a great picture of a kite! It's very easy to do and looks so good you'll be able to frame it. You will need some white paper, scissors, a glue stick, a black pen and different coloured tissue paper. Tear some long strips of green and yellow tissue paper. Glue them to the bottom of the paper like this to make grass. Then draw a kite shape on some more tissue paper and cut it out. Glue the kite in the sky and decorate it by gluing on different coloured triangles. Now with a black pen, draw someone flying the kite. Don't forget to draw the kite string. Finally, cut long thin strips of tissue paper to make your kite tail. Glue them down like this so it looks like the kite is blowing in the wind. What a brilliant picture! Why don't you have a go? And then... Frame it! Isn't that a great effect? Let's see what the weather's like today. I can't wait to get outside! <laughs> oh no! What a horrible storm! Oh, I wish I was somewhere nice and hot and sunny. I'd love to go to a magical holiday island where there was lots of ice cream, sunshine and fresh coconuts from the trees. <laughs> Mmm, <laughs> what a wonderful dream, eh? <laughs> oh, wait a minute, though. We don't have to dream. We can make the sand, the sunshine and the magical island come to us. I've just had a great idea. Let's try something. Try making a terrific tropical picture using sand and gloopy glue. Let's make it! We'll need some things from the doodle drawers! Come on! Some food colouring and a spoon. Some gloopy PVA glue and a pen. And some thick card. Ooh. Now we'll also need some play sand which you can get from a toy shop and some icing bags which you can get from a supermarket. I'll be back in two ticks. Yeah. I've got them. Here we go. There's my icing bag. I'm going to put that there. And here's the play sand. I'm going to put that down nice and safe. Now I've got plans for those later. 
But for now, take a look at this brilliant sand pitcher. It's amazing. And to make it, we need to separate our sand into four separate bowls that look a bit like this. Now into each bowl, we need to put two cups of sand. One, two, and do the same in the other bowls. Now we're going to add some food colouring to each bowl. Now you can choose whatever colours you like, but I'm going to add yellow, blue, green, and I'm also going to mix up brown by adding a bit of green and a bit of red. Now remember, the more food colouring you add, the stronger your colour will be. Now we're going to add gloopy glue to each bowl. <laughs> now we can start mixing. You need to make sure your mixture will squeeze through an icing bag, but don't make it too runny. There. Now we're going to scoop sand from each bowl into an icing bag. Now if you find this tricky, you might want to ask an adult to help you. Make sure you use a different bag for each colour. There we go. Now we need to draw a picture on some coloured card. Now this blue card will make a nice sky for our tropical island. <laughs> now let's colour it in. Use the yellow icing bag to colour in the island and the sun. <laughs> Gently squeeze out the mixture to fill in your picture. <laughs> Again, if you find this tricky, ask an adult to help you. Now use the brown sandy mixture to fill in the trunk and the coconut. We can use the blue mixture to colour in the sea. <laughs> And lastly, the green sandy mixture we can use for the leaves on the palm tree. <laughs> and look, it's all done. Now all we need to do is leave it to dry overnight. Night! <laughs> Morning! Hey! And when it's dry, it'll be nice and hard like this. It's a terrific tropical island made out of sand. But you don't just have to make an island. Oh no! How about making a red and black crab on yellow sand? Or even a magical purple and pink castle on glittery grass? Fantastic! Why don't you try it? <laughs> Oh no, it's still raining outside. Ow. Oh well, at least it's not raining in here. <laughs> oh, oh, oh no, not again. Oh, 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 oh no, it's raining coconut. Oh, ow, no, no, stop it. Oh, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> now, take a look at this. What a brilliant lighthouse picture. It's great fun to do and looks so good, you'll be able to frame it. You will need white card, coloured tissue paper, gloopy PVA glue, a paintbrush, a black pen and a pencil. First, draw a picture with a pencil. This is going to be a lighthouse on some rocks in a stormy sea. Use a paintbrush to fill in your drawing with PVA glue. Try and be as neat as you can. Now colour in your picture by placing the tissue paper onto the wet glue, like this. Don't worry if you go over the lines, it all adds to the effect. Then paint more glue over the top and leave it to dry. Finally add details with a black pen. It's a wonderful lighthouse. What a brilliant picture. Why don't you have a go? And then frame it. There you are, another bright idea. <laughs> have a look.
look at my teeny tiny car here. It's brilliant. And if you think that's good, take a look at this. <laughs> here he is. It's my mini Mr. Maker. Let's make it. <laughs> oh, I love playing with teeny tiny toys, which gives me a great idea. Let's make something. Make yourself a marvellous miniature garden. It's not big, but it's very clever. Let's make it! We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. A green paper plate and some pipe cleaners. A pencil, some modelling clay and some coloured cards. Lollipop sticks and twigs. Sticky tape, glue and red stickers. Some flower-shaped buttons and a toy duck. Wow. Really? Great! Whoa! Now, to make a tiny garden like this one here, which has a little path, a pond with a duck swimming in it, a flower bed, a fence and some lovely trees. So let's start off by getting a blue piece of card like this and we're going to draw a squiggly shape with a pencil for our pond. There we go, that looks good. Now we're going to get a green piece of card and we're going to draw two cloud shapes. Now these are going to be the top of our trees. Great! Now we can cut these shapes out, but be careful because scissors are sharp. <laughs> now, glue the blue squiggly pond in the middle of the plate. Now we need to get some grey modelling clay and we're going to roll a few tiny balls like this. Now these balls are going to help us make a tiny path. Just gently squeeze them onto the plate like this. Lovely. Now let's get some brown modelling clay and we need to roll a sort of long sausage shape and we're going to mould and squidge it to the back of the plate to make a flower bed. Then carefully snap three of your lolly sticks in half. Now, you might want to ask an adult to help you with this bit, as it's a bit tricky. Now, bring in two whole lolly sticks, like this, and lay them down. And then start to glue all of the pieces of lolly stick across to make a fence. When the fence is dry, carefully push it into the back of your flower bed. Here we go. Lovely. Now, let's take the two curvy tree shapes that we cut out earlier and we're going to stick on two twigs to the back. A little twig for the little one and a large twig for the large tree. And now we have two trees. They look really good, but we can make them look even better by adding some red stickers for apples. There we go. Two lovely apple trees. Let's stick them in to our garden. I think I'll put the big tree at the back here, like that. And then the smaller one just in front. Fantastic! Well, our garden is starting to take shape, but now we need to plant some flowers in our flower bed. Now, first of all, we need to get some green pipe cleaners like this and just very carefully snip them into small pieces. Now you've got your pieces of pipe cleaner, you need to find yourself a flower-shaped button like this. If you turn it over, there's a little loop in the back in which you can push the pipe cleaner piece through and you just fold it over to make a little tiny flower. Now, don't worry if you haven't got any flower-shaped buttons. You can always draw and cut out a flower shape on some coloured card, make a little hole in the middle 
and then push your piece of pipe cleaner through like this. And when you've got your flowers, bring back your garden and start planting your flowers in the flower bed. <laughs> wow, isn't that amazing? Why not float something on the pond, like a teeny tiny boat or a little toy duck? Oh, look at it, a wonderful, terrific, tiny garden. And you can make any type of tiny world that you like. How about this tiny jungle? It's got lots of card leaves and pipe cleaner trees with a toy tiger. Or you could even try making another tiny garden on a bigger tray. And instead of a fence, it's got a lolly stick bench. Now, take a look at this. This nighttime picture is made in a really clever way and it looks so effective you'll be able to frame it. You will need coloured card, dark paper, white chalk, black paint, a pencil and a paintbrush. First, paint a thick layer of black paint all over the card and leave it to dry. Then take a piece of dark coloured paper and completely cover it with white chalk. Place the chalk side down on top of the dry painted card. And now you can draw a nighttime picture in a very clever way. Draw whatever you want. This is going to be a cat outside in the moonlight. Add a long fence and the moon. And let's add a tree. Then slowly lift it off to reveal where the white chalk has rubbed onto the black painted card underneath giving you a fantastic effect. What a brilliant picture! Why don't you have a go? And then... Frame it! Isn't that clever? Minute make time! Oh, great! It's minute make time! Come on! <laughs> and here's what we're going to make today. A slot plane! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was being a bit silly there, wasn't I? Or some might say, plain silly. <laughs> no? OK, well, to make a slot plane, you will need a pair of scissors, a glue stick, a black pen, a triangle of white card, a sausage shape of white card, and a large rectangle of white card. Now, do you think it's possible to make this in just one minute? No way! Oh, I see. Well, I think I can do it, but I will have to be very quick. Don't worry, though, I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Let's make it in a minute! Stop the clock! Let's go! Let's get our triangle and our sausage shape of white card. And if we glue the triangle on the end, that will make a good fin for our aeroplane. There we go. Now I'm going to turn it over and fold it in half like that and then make a snip very carefully along this folded edge. That's going to make a slot. Now if we open that up, we can make ourselves a wing by drawing a wing shape on this rectangular piece of card there. Now I'm going to get a pair of scissors and cut this wing shape out very carefully. Be careful! Oh, I'm being careful, Toki, don't you worry. Here comes the wing. There we go. Right now, hopefully, our wing will slot into our plane. Let's have a look. Yes, it does. That looks great. OK, now I'm going to get my black pen and draw on a window at the front and then windows all the way along. There's one there, one there, one there and one there. I've done it! Stop the clock! <laughs> Phew! That was close. But if you've got more than a minute, you can always tape on a piece of string and ask someone to hang it up for you. Hee <laughs> hee! Plus, there are lots of other designs that you can try too. What about a stunt plane made with red card and a pointy body? Or even a cartoon style jet with a big round body and short round wings. Slot planes! Made in a minute! Why don't you try it? Here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. 
To make a slot plane, glue the triangle to one end of the oval card. Draw a wing shape on the bottom edge of your card and cut it out. Fold the plane in half. Make a small snip and slot the wings through the middle. Draw windows at the front and down the sides of your slot plane. And then ask someone to hang it up. Why don't you try and make it in a minute? Now, take a look at this. This seaside picture is made from old things that you can find in your kitchen. It's fun to do and looks so good, you'll be able to frame it. You'll need some thick card, glue, scissors, kitchen roll, kitchen scourers, a dishcloth, blue rubber gloves and a duster. First, glue a dishcloth to the top half of a piece of card like this. Then glue a duster to the bottom half. Carefully cut off the extra material around the edges and glue on the rubber gloves to make the C. Tear small pieces of kitchen roll. These are going to be the waves. Glue them onto your rubber gloves to make your C look frothy. Now carefully cut shapes from scouring pads to make a sun, a boat, and a bucket and spade. Then stick everything down with gloopy glue. It's a wonderful seaside scene. What a brilliant picture! Why don't you have a go? And then... Frame it! Isn't that a great idea? Now, take a look at this. This underwater picture is very effective and you don't even need a paintbrush to make it. What's more, it looks so good, you'll be able to frame it. You will need white paper, card, strips of blue and green tissue paper, some water, sponges, black paint, scissors, a pen, a pencil, and some modeling clay. Start by wetting the white paper with a sponge. Then lay blue and green tissue paper strips across the paper, all the way to the bottom, like this. Now wet the tissue paper with a sponge, and then put it to one side. Take a piece of card and use a pen to draw the outline of an underwater creature. This is going to be a shark with a pointy nose, two fins and a tail. Then pierce a hole in the card using a pencil and some modelling clay. Use the hole to help you carefully cut the shark shape out. When the tissue paper has dried, peel it off and you will see that the colour from the tissue paper has transferred to the paper underneath. Then lay the shark shape on top and dab black paint through the hole onto the paper behind. Leave it to dry and then remove the shark shape to reveal a shark swimming underwater. What a brilliant picture! Why don't you have a go? And then... Frame it! Isn't that great? <laughs> oh, don't mind me, I'm just practising my silly faces. Look at this. <laughs> oh, that's a really good one. Can you make silly faces? Go on, pull a funny face, the sillier the better. Go on. Brilliant! <laughs> that was a very funny face. And all of our funny, silly faces have given me a great idea. Let's make something. Make a funny face of your own, like this great gargoyle that you can stick on your wall or bedroom door. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the Doodle Drawers. <laughs> a paper plate and an old newspaper. Some scraps of cardboard, some gloopy PVA glue, and some sticky tape. And some paint. Whoa! -ho! Now we also need some play sand, which you can find in a toy shop. I'll be back in a tick. 
I've got it. Here it is, our play sand. Now, take a look at this gargoyle. A gargoyle is a funny creature made out of stone that you might find on the front of an old building. Now, to make one, you need to start with its mouth. And for that, we need a sheet of newspaper. And we're going to roll it up like this. Then we're going to give it a little twist and stick it together with sticky tape. Now we're going to bend it around into a loop shape and stick this together with more tape. And then give it a squeeze into a mouth shape. Now we need to bring in our paper plate and turn it upside down because this is going to be the face. So let's put on our mouth and stick it into position. Great! Now to make a nose, we get another piece of newspaper and scrunch it up into a sort of pear shape. Tape it together and then stick it in the middle of the face. Now we can roll up two small balls of newspaper for nostrils. And then we can tape them either side of the nose. Now for the eyes, use half a sheet of paper to make thinner twists. Let's roll it up. And again, we can use some sticky tape to hold it in position. Now we can loop it round. Now you can always tear off a bit of the loop to make your eye smaller and then stick it together. And now I'm going to put it here next to the nose. Now, of course, we need a pupil in the middle. For that, we need to scrunch up a ball from a smaller piece of newspaper. And that's going to go in the middle of the eye shape and then do the same on the other side. He looks very silly, doesn't he? And now we can add some extra detail by cutting out some cardboard squares for gargoyle teeth. Maybe some cardboard triangles for ears. Be careful, though, because scissors are sharp. Oh, here are my scissors. Here's my cardboard. Start with the teeth. Now, cutting cardboard can be a bit fiddly, so it might be a good idea to ask an adult to help you. Then you can place them onto your gargoyle face and do the same with two cardboard ears and stick it all down. <laughs> Great! Now comes the messy bit. Put your gargoyle on an old tray. There we go. Now we're going to cover the whole thing in a layer of gloopy glue. OK, now we need to be quick about this because we don't want the glue to dry. We're going to sprinkle play sand all over it. Then shake off the extra sand and leave it to dry. Now you can paint it a nice stony grey colour, add some white highlights and use black paint for the darker details. And there it is, your very own funny gargoyle. And you can make lots of different gargoyle faces. This one's got big ears and extra green paint to look like there's moss growing on it. Or how about making a big gargoyle with a sticking out tongue? All of them are brilliant, funny faces. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, I think you've got a very funny face too, Mr Maker. Oh, well, thank you very much. You're too kind. Now, take a look at this. What a brilliant picture made by drawing in paint on shiny paper. 
It's very easy to do and looks so good you'll be able to frame it. You will need some card, shiny silver paper, a pencil with a rubber at the end, glue, paint and a paintbrush. First, stick a piece of shiny paper to some card. Then cover the shiny paper in dark coloured paint. Now draw in the wet paint using the rubber at the end of the pencil, making sure you press down firmly. You can draw whatever you like, but this is going to be a truck. Start off at the front of the truck, add a window and a wheel, then at the back of the truck add two more wheels. Add some details and go over all the lines again. And when it's dry, you can see the shiny paper through the paint. What a brilliant picture! Why don't you have a go? And then... Frame it! Isn't that effective? Now, take a look at this. What a fantastic bonfire picture. It looks so good, you'll be able to frame it. You'll need some black paper, paint, PVA glue and a paintbrush, glitter, sticky stars and some twigs. To make your bonfire picture, start with fire-coloured paint like red, yellow and orange in squeezy bottles. Squeeze the paint straight onto the paper in nice wavy lines. Next you can add your orange and red. To make your paint look even more like flames, use the end of a paintbrush and weave a wobbly line through it, like this. And leave it to dry. Then squeeze the PVA glue to make wavy lines on top of the flames. Add a blob at the base. And now for the fun bit, add some glitter. Gold at the base of the bonfire and red and silver around the flames. Shake off all the glitter that hasn't stuck to the glue and make sure that you clean up after yourself. Then add your twigs. Make a small pile at the bottom like this. And drizzle some gloopy glue over the top. Now all that's left to do is stick on some stars around your bonfire for the sparks. What a brilliant bonfire picture. You can almost feel the heat with this fantastic 3D effect. Why don't you have a go? What a great way of making a really clever picture. Now all that's left to do is frame it. That looks amazing. I was just looking up at the stars. I've always wondered what it would be like to be up in space. Whoa! <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if you could paint in space? I expect it will be a bit tricky. <laughs> oh, oh, wait, wait, oi! Right, here we go. <laughs> wait, 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 come back! Mmm, what a great daydream. And who knows, I might actually get to paint in space one day. Plus, it's given me a great idea. Let's try something. Try making a splatter space picture that's out of this world. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. <laughs> some paper and a pen. A glue stick and some scissors. Some paint and some sticky tape. An old toothbrush and a piece of card. Whoa! Now, to make a splatter space picture like this one here, first make sure that you put down some old paper or some newspaper, as this can get a bit messy. Now, let's mix some white paint with a little bit of water. Let's do the same with yellow paint and red paint to make three different runny paint mixtures. Don't forget to give them all a good stir. There. 
Now we're ready for the really fun and really messy bit. So let's get a piece of black paper like that and then get the old toothbrush and put it into the white paint mixture. And then get our piece of card ready and we're going to hold the toothbrush at the bottom of the paper. And with the card, scrape towards you. Wow, look at that. What a great effect. Now you must remember to scrape towards you when you do this and not away from you because you'll splatter yourself in paint. Keep going until your paper is covered in splatters. <laughs> when it's dry, put it to one side and get another piece of colored paper like this brown one here and start ripping out lumpy crater shapes like this. Now we can put this on top of our splattered space pitcher to make the craters. And now add some extra details with a black pen. Next, how about adding some extra planets in the background? Just splatter some red and orange paper with the red and yellow paint we made earlier. Then find something that's round, like this plastic cup, and draw around it to get the perfect circle shape. You can even draw around the inside of a sticky tape roll to get smaller circles. You can do as many as you like. When you're happy with your circles, cut them out. But remember to be careful, because scissors are sharp. Oh, all right. <laughs> These will give us our splattery planets and we can place them wherever we like. Now, what do all crazy space planets need? A crazy space alien. Let's draw one. It can look however you like, but this one's going to have three eyes. Ooh. <laughs> There, now let's paint it. And then when it's dry, we can add some extra detail with a black pen. And then very carefully cut it out. Now put your alien on the planet. He'll look really good hiding behind one of the craters. And when you're happy with your picture, glue everything down. There we have it, a fantastic splatter space picture. Splattering is great fun. Oh, I'd love to meet an alien one day. Hello, Mr Maker. Will you come and visit me sometime? Oh, thank you, Mr Alien. I'd love to come and visit you. <laughs> Now, take a look at this. This layered boat picture really stands out. It's fun to do and looks so good, you'll be able to frame it. You will need coloured card and cardboard squares, a pen, some scissors and a glue stick. Start by drawing the bottom of your boat. It looks good if you use different colours for the different parts of the boat. Draw circles rectangles and squares to make each of the parts. Then carefully cut them out. Stick them together to make your boat, like this. Now let's make the waves. Draw the first wave on light blue card. Then draw the second, slightly bigger wave on medium blue card, like this. And lastly, draw a third, even bigger wave on dark blue card. Carefully cut out all of your wave shapes. Use cardboard squares to make the different layers in your picture stand out. The more you want your picture to stand out, the more cardboard squares you should use. Stick them to the back of your boat and do the same along each of the waves. 
Now use another piece of card for your background and stick on your dark blue waves by lining up the corners. Then stick the medium blue waves on top in the same way. And finally do the same with the light blue waves. Last of all, tuck your boat under the dark blue waves and stick it into place, just like this. Look, the layers really help your picture stand out. What a brilliant picture! Why don't you have a go? And then... Frame it! Isn't that great? I'm looking at the night sky through my telescope. <laughs> There's the North Star, and there's the plough. The night sky is so beautiful. I love it when the moon shines brightly and the stars twinkle down from up on high. <laughs> oh, look, even wise old Mr Owl likes it too. <laughs> oh, and that gives me a great idea. Let's make something. Try making twinkling twigs and a pine cone owl. Sparkly. Let's make it! We'll need some things from the doodle drawers! Come on! Some twigs and a pine cone. Some glitter and a pencil. Gloopy PVA glue and a glue stick. Some coloured paper and an old plastic lid. Whoa! <laughs> now we also need some googly eyes and some air drying clay. Now we can get these from an art and craft shop. I'll be back in a tick. I've got them. Here we are. There are two googly eyes. And here's the air drying clay. Now you can make your very own twinkling twigs. That's a perfect home for a woodland creature. Just start off by moulding your air drying clay into a plastic lid like this. Squeeze it down and push it all the way out to the edges. Now we're doing this because it's going to hold all of our twinkling twigs in place. Now we can start arranging our twigs. Now you can arrange them however you like, but how about we start with this nice big large twig here and push it into the clay at the front. Now we can start with some other twigs. How about we get this rather tall twig and push it in at the back? Now you'll notice that some of my twigs have dried leaves on them. Now these look great, it really adds to the effect. Choose as many twigs as you like, push them into the clay and leave it to dry. <laughs> then to make your twigs twinkle, stand your clay base on some old paper or an old tray and cover the whole thing in gloopy glue. And now for the fun bit, shake on some glitter. And once it's covered in glitter, shake any extra glitter off and leave it to dry again. Once your twinkling twigs are dry, you can make a woodland creature to go in them, like this pine cone owl. So let's get some coloured paper and draw a curvy shape like this. There we go. Now, on some different coloured paper, draw the same curvy shape, but a bit smaller. And last but not least, let's get a piece of yellow paper like this and draw a triangle. Now, this is going to be the beak for our owl. Now we can cut all of our pieces out, but be careful because scissors are sharp. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Mm. Now glue the pieces together to make the owl's eyes and beak like this. Then there's a finishing touch. Let's add two googly eyes. There's one and there's two. It's the face of our owl and we can stick it onto our pine cone with some gloopy glue. 
finally glue your owl onto the big twig at the front using lots of gloopy glue. You might want to hold your owl in position as it starts to dry. And when everything is dry, gently take the clay out of the lid like this. And there, look at it. Isn't it sparkly? And you can even try making other things twinkle amongst your twinkling twigs. How about making a lot of twinkling twigs with a pine cone and card fox and a little conker robin? Why don't you try making your very own twinkling twigs? A perfect present for your friends and family. <laughs> Look at this. I've been sorting out all of my sea creatures. I've got everything here. I've got a whale, a very nice starfish and a lobster. Ow! You little nipper, you. Well, I can't seem to find my favourite octopus, Ollie, anywhere. Now, where could he be? Eh? <laughs> Oh, maybe he's over in the doodle drawers. Oh, I hope not. How am I going to find him in here? Ollie? <coughs> Ollie, is that you? <coughs> well, I don't care if you and your friends are having fun in there. You can't stay in the doodle drawers. <coughs> you need to go somewhere else. <coughs> somewhere fun. <coughs> somewhere colourful. <coughs> somewhere... <coughs> Watery. <laughs> oh, this gives me a good idea, though. Why not make a mini fish tank from a box as a home for your very own sea creatures? Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. <laughs> a clear plastic box. Brightly coloured scouring pads and sponges. Some scissors and some gloopy PVA glue. And some felt tip pens. Whoa! Now we also need some googly eyes, and you can get those in an art and craft shop. I'll be back in a tick. I've got them. Right, here we go. Here are our googly eyes. There. Now, to make your very own sea in a box, like this one here, you'll first need to find a clear plastic box with a lid like this. Now, all sorts of things come in these plastic boxes, so have a good look round your local supermarket and I'm sure you'll find one. Now, this one looks really good, so let's get started. Let's take off the lid and bring in a brightly coloured scouring pad, because this is going to be the water. Now, let's put our lid on top and then draw around the lid with a felt-tip pen. There! Now we need to cut this shape out, but be careful because scissors are sharp. <laughs> Place this into your plastic box like this to make a watery background. Now we need to make some sand and some seaweed. Now you can make this out of whatever you like but I'm going to use the scouring sponges. We're going to very carefully snip out this middle bit. OK, let's get the scissors. Snip. If we unravel it, we'll make a sandy seabed. Now we can lay it into our box. There, brilliant. Now let's make some seaweed. So for that we need ah, one of these green scouring sponges. Very carefully get our scissors and make a snip. Let's cut this end off first. There we go. Now if we pull this apart, it looks like seaweed. Very nice. Now how about a beautiful flower? like this red one here. 
Let's get a red scouring sponge. And again, pull it apart. And if we unravel it slightly, it's a beautiful flower. Let's put it in. I think down the bottom here would be good. There. Now it's starting to take shape, but something's missing. Oh, I know, a sea creature. Let's make an octopus. Now for that, we'll need a thin colored sponge, like this green one here, that'll look good. And let's get a felt tip in the same color, a green one. Okay, let's draw a nice big round head and some wiggly legs. And we can also add some extra details with our pen as well. Now we can give our octopus a tongue by bringing in a tongue colored sponge like this pink one here and using a pink felt tip pen to draw it. Then carefully cut these out. Now let's glue them together and add some googly eyes with some gloopy glue. Brilliant! There's our octopus. Let's put him in his nice new home. Fantastic. Now let's put the lid on. And there we go. Fantastic. But you don't just have to give a home to an octopus, it could be a starfish. This is made using a yellow sponge cut into a star shape. Or maybe some exotic fish. This is made using lots of different colours and types of sponge. Let's take a closer look. Why don't you have a go at making your own sea in a box? <laughs> Oh, hello, Sid. <coughs> Whoa! <laughs> it's great in here, and the best thing about it is <coughs> you don't get wet at all. Now, take a look at this. It's a rubbed out picture of a city at night time. It looks so good, you'll be able to frame it. You will need white paper, a black chalk pastel or a charcoal stick, and a pencil with a rubber on top or a small rubber. First, cover the white paper with charcoal. This can get a bit messy, so make sure you do it on top of some newspaper or old paper. Now, using the rubber, rub out rectangle, square and triangle shapes along the middle of the paper like this. These are going to be the towers in our city picture. Next, rub out a house shape at the front of the picture. Give it a sloping up and down roof with a chimney. Rub out window shapes in the towers, leaving squares and rectangles of black as you do it. Then rub out four squares to make a window in the house at the front of your city picture. Now rub out the middle section between the house and the towers in the background. You could even add a little moon in the night sky. It's a rubbed out city at night. What a brilliant picture. Why don't you have a go? And then frame it. Isn't it effective? This fantastic seaside picture looks great, doesn't it? And it's made without using any brushes, just sponges and paint. It's very easy to do and looks so good, you'll be able to frame it. You will need some coloured paint, a pen, and some sponge strips that have been carefully cut out of kitchen sponge, like this. To make your seaside picture, start off by dipping one of the sponge strips into blue paint. Then drag it along the bottom of the paper, like this, so that the paint spreads with the sponge. It's easy. Just dip and drag, and if you run out of paint, just dip it and drag again. This is going to be the sea. Now let's do the same again with another piece of sponge and some green paint. It's a good idea to use a clean bit of sponge every time you use a different colour. This is going to be the harbour wall next to the sea. Now let's do the seaside cliffs with some brown paint. 
Next, use some nice bright colours for the seaside houses. You can drag your paint downwards to make a house shape like this. And don't forget to add a roof with some brown paint. You can make as many different coloured houses as you want. It's starting to look really effective, isn't it? We can add some more blue paint above the houses for the sky. And now, with another piece of sponge, let's add some boats. Just dip your sponge in the paint and drag it round in a curve shape like this. Add brown paint for the boat's mast with the edge of the sponge. You can do as many boats as you want. Now all that's left to do is add some details with a black felt tip pen. Draw doors and windows on your houses. Add some finishing touches to the boats. And add some details to your harbour wall so it really stands out. A sponge seaside picture. And you don't even need a paintbrush to make it. What a brilliant picture! Why don't you have a go? And then... Frame it! I like making pictures out of all sorts of things. Oh, here. So, look at all these old plates and cups and saucers. Oh, look, here's my old art trophy. And what else is in here? Wow, it's an antique painting of my great uncle, the famous explorer. This is all really precious and fragile stuff. So I'm going to keep it in this box until I need it all for a special occasion and I'm wrapping it up in this stuff. Bubble wrap! It's special, soft and bouncy stuff with lots of... Bubbles! <laughs> no, actually, I mustn't pop the bubbles, no. Well, maybe just one more, eh? <laughs> I love bubble wrap! Oh, brilliant! And it gives me a brilliant idea. Let's make something! It's a brilliant bubble wrap cactus that you'll never need to water. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. Some pipe cleaners. Some bubble wrap. Some sticky tape. Some glue. Some paint and some paint brushes. And a plastic plant pot. <laughs> wow! Now to make your very own bubble wrap cactus, like this one here, you will need five large squares of bubble wrap, like this. Now place one of these squares bubble side down onto the table. Then get a pipe cleaner and put it at the bottom edge of this square. Then stick it in place with some sticky tape. Let's roll it up like this, all the way to the end, making a sort of bubble wrap sausage. Then just as we get to the end, we leave a little bit here to put on some glue, which will help us stick it together. Now we can do the same with two more pieces of bubble wrap. Now you have three bubble wrap rolls, you can stick them all together. So, put glue on the bottom half of each of the rolls. Then, we can squeeze all the sticky ends together, but don't squeeze too hard or all the bubbles will pop. Now we need to take our plant pot and scrunch up another square of bubble wrap into a ball. Now if we put this inside, we need to put on top a splodge of gloopy glue. That's going to help us stick our cactus in place. So let's put it in right into the glue. And now with our last piece of bubble wrap, we can fill in all the space around the bubble wrap rolls. Now, we need to take one of the rolls and bend it downwards like that, and then bend it up again like this. Ah, 
Now do the same with another roll. And look, it's starting to look like a cactus. But now we need to paint it. So let's make a painty mixture using half green paint and half gloopy glue. Then we can paint this mixture all over our cactus. Then we can use a dark green painty mixture to paint the creases. And we can also use a yellow painty mixture to highlight some extra details. And last but not least, we can use a brown painty mixture here to show up the soil. Let's get painting. And when it's all nice and dry, you'll have your very own bubble wrap cactus. It's fantastic. Now, normally a cactus is spiky and prickly and not very nice to touch. But the good thing about our one is that it's soft and squidgy. Fantastic. Although I must remember not to pop the bubbles this time. Now, you can create any type of cactus you like. <coughs> Look at this one. It's got brightly colored decoration all around the pot. And how about this big round cactus made with a big ball of bubble wrap? And you can even try adding brightly colored bubble wrap flowers. Fantastic cactus plants made with brilliant bubble wrap. I'm just putting the finishing touches to my aeroplane model. There we go. There. All finished. It's taken me ages to glue this together. And because I was using lots of gloopy glue, I made sure I put plenty of old paper down just in case I got it a mess. <laughs> oh, no. How did that get there? And how did that get there? Oh. How did that get on there? And, hey, what's that? Oh, how did that get there? Oh, well, I suppose by using old paper, it doesn't really matter if it gets ripped up and torn into pieces. Plus, it gives me a great idea. Let's try something. Try using torn up bits of paper to make this super city picture. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. Come on. Some coloured paper and a ruler. <laughs> A glue stick, a black pen and a pencil, some newspaper. Whoa! Now, to make a torn paper city picture like this one here, find yourself a large piece of coloured paper. And starting at the bottom of the paper, draw a large rectangle with a pencil. Next, draw a tall, pointy triangle shape, about as tall as the rectangle. And how about two more rectangles? You don't have to be neat, and in fact, you can draw whatever shapes you like. You could even add a curved roof like this. Now for the tricky bit. We need to rip along all of these lines. But you can use a ruler to help you like this. Place the ruler down alongside one of your pencil lines, hold the ruler down firmly, and then tear the paper against it. <laughs> Put these pieces to one side for the moment, because we'll need those later, and then get yourself another piece of coloured paper. This darker shade will look rather good. Then let's grab a pencil and start drawing some more shapes. Now, you can use a white pencil here, if you like, because it really shows up the pencil lines. Just let your pencil go wherever it wants. And when you're happy with your buildings, tear them out as well. Put these pieces to one side as well and grab your last piece of paper. Now, again, this works really well if it's an even darker shade. Now, let's start drawing some more building shapes. But this time, they're going to be joined up at the bottom of the page. And it's a great idea if the drawings are quite small. And when you're happy with your buildings, tear these out as well. <laughs> Now, get another piece of paper 
and very carefully place your biggest buildings at the back. Put your middle-sized buildings in the middle and the smallest buildings on top. There, very nice. Now we can get gluing. It's looking great already, but let's add something extra with some torn up pieces of newspaper. Just tear out little rectangles or squares for windows and doors. <laughs> tear as many pieces as you want and arrange them onto your buildings. Now all that's left to do is add some extra detail with a black pen. Just carry on until you're happy with your picture. This one's going to have lots of windows. <laughs> it's a fabulous torn paper city. And there are some other ideas you could try too. A countryside scene. It's got rolling hills and torn paper flowers. Or even a beach with torn paper sailing boats and gentle torn waves. So you see, something great came out of me ripping up all that paper. I knew it would. Now, where did I put that model plane, eh? Oh, no! Oh, well, that was just plain silly, wasn't it, eh? <sighs> now, take a look at this. What a wonderful picture of a countryside scene. It's easy to do and looks so good, you'll be able to frame it. You'll need some white paper, paint, coloured pencils and sticky tack. Start off by stretching out the sticky tack to make long, thin strips. Lay one long strip of sticky tack across the bottom of the paper in a wavy line. Press it down lightly so it sticks to the paper. Now stick down more strips in curved lines. These are going to be the fields in the distance. Make three circles with the sticky tack and stick them down at the top of the paper. These will be the trees. Now for the paint. Paint inside the lines of our sticky tack shapes. Green looks good. This is going to be our grass. Let's paint the other fields and trees with different colours. Once it's dry, you can peel all the sticky tack off. Wow, it's white where the sticky tack was. And now you can clearly see the patchwork fields. Draw lines in the fields and little Vs for grass with coloured pencils. Draw small spiral shapes. Add a fence along the top of the grass. And how about some clouds in the sky? Finish off your picture by adding tree trunks like this. You could even add a little sheep. It's a beautiful countryside scene. What a great way of making a really clever picture. Now all that's left to do is... Frame it! It looks like rain. Look what I found in the doodle drawers today. Bandages! People use them when they've hurt themselves. Oh, hey! But luckily, I'm feeling fine. Oh, that's better. I'd much rather use bandages to make a fantastic piece of art. But the question is, what shall I make? Hmm. 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 Bandages. Hey? Bandages. Bandages. A mummy. Of course, <laughs> Egypt! Aha, that's it! I've got a great idea! Let's try something! Try making an amazing ancient Egyptian picture out of bandages! Let's make it! As well as some bandages, we'll need some other things from the doodle drawers! Come on, you lot! <laughs> some gloopy PVA glue some coloured crayons, a fiery dragon, no, we don't need him, some coffee powder, a 
and a sheet of white paper. Whoa! Now, to make an ancient Egyptian picture, like this one here, you have to start with half a teaspoon of coffee powder. That's right, I said coffee powder. So, we need to put it into a cup. And then mix it in with two splashes of water. Now, give it a good stir. And now we can put in a big splodge of gloopy glue. And now let's give this a good stir. Now, the next bit is the fun bit, but it's also the messy bit. So make sure you put down some old paper or newspaper first. Now, we're going to bring in our paper, and then we need to cut some bandages into strips and lay them across the paper. Now, we're going to very carefully paint our glue and coffee mixture all over the bandages. And when it's dry, all of the bandages will be stuck together. And it's gone a lovely light brown colour. Let's start drawing our picture with a black wax crayon. Start with a palm tree. A nice trunk bending over with palm leaves on top. Now, make sure you do all the outlines in black. Put some triangles for pyramids up here. And let's not forget the sun in the sky. Let's add some grass around the tree. There! And when you're happy with your picture, you can start colouring it in. Wax crayons look really good on this rough sort of paper. <laughs> it's an ancient Egyptian picture from many, many years ago. You can try some other ideas too. You can make other pictures look really old, like this castle picture. Or you could try your very own old-looking treasure map. So why don't you try making some old-looking paper and drawing an ancient picture that's very realistic? Whoa! Where am I? I didn't mean this realistic! Whoa! <laughs> now, take a look at this. It's a fantastic, windy picture. It's very easy to do and looks so good, you'll be able to frame it. You will need some sheets of coloured tissue paper, a brown wax crayon, a black pen, some glue and three sheets of coloured paper. Start off by tearing a thick strip off the bottom of some light blue paper. Glue it on some dark blue paper, lining up the corners. Then tear out a sloping strip from some green paper. Make it a bit higher than your blue piece. Glue it to the bottom corner of your picture so it overlaps the light blue. Draw a tree with a brown wax crayon. It looks good if the branches are all leaning in one direction, as if they're being blown in the gusty wind. Outline the branches and the trunk in black pen. This makes it really stand out. To make leaves, fold some tissue paper in half like this. Carefully cut out a small curved shape along the folded line. Open it up and you've made yourself a leaf. Make lots of different sizes and colours. Place the smallest leaves closest to the tree and the bigger leaves further away. When you're happy, glue them all down. What a great windy picture! Why don't you try it? It will blow you away! What a brilliant picture! Why don't you have a go? And then... Frame it! I like making pictures out of all sorts of things. So... Brilliant jungle picture. You don't even need a paintbrush to do it. Just paint and your fingers. It looks so good that you will be able to frame it. You will need some coloured paper, a black pen and lots of different coloured paints. Yellow, brown, orange, white and three different shades of green. Plus, there's one other important ingredient, your fingers. You will need to start off with some dark green paint. But if you don't have any, it's really easy to make. Just add a small amount of black paint to an ordinary green paint and mix together. The more black paint you add, the darker your green will be. Just dip your fingers into the paint and dab them downwards on the paper like this to make the trees at the back of the jungle. And you can use a different coloured green to make even more trees. 
This is great fun, but it can get a bit messy, so give your hands a wipe in between colours. Now make the tree trunks with the brown paint. You can do this by dipping the side of your hand into the paint and printing it in the same way. This gives you a nice thick tree trunk. Now leave it to dry. For the leaves on the trees, you'll need some light green paint. If you don't have any, just add white paint to the ordinary green paint and mix it together. Make leaves like this. Now for the grass. Dab some light green paint along the bottom of the paper. Add a bit of dark green. You can even add some jungle flowers with yellow paint. And let's make a tiger to live in the jungle. Dab orange paint from your finger in a circle for its head. Add some ears. And now for the face. Add eyes by making two small white dots with your finger. Add yellow dots on the ears and cheeks. And when it's dry, use a black pen for the eye and mouth. All finished! A fantastic finger paint jungle! What a brilliant picture! Why don't you have a go? And then... Frame it! Very impressive. Now for something really special. Sorry about all the mess. I'm trying to draw a picture of my great auntie Mavis Maker, the prize-winning singer. Yeah, but I keep getting it wrong. Um, uh, no, that's not right either. Oh. <laughs> Oh dear. Um, yeah, <laughs> I seem to have created a bit of a mountain of scrunch paper. <laughs> but don't worry, it'll get reused for something. Right, come on then, I'm going to give it one more go. Come on, Auntie Mavis, give me some inspiration. Yodely. Oh, oh, hold on, everyone. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh dear. Oh, but wait a minute, this has given me a great idea! Let's make it! We'll need some things from the doodle drawers! Come on! Some coloured paper and some white paper too. A small piece of sponge. A glue stick. Some white paint. And some scissors. Phew! Whoa! Now, to make a scrunched up picture, like this one here, first scrunch up two pieces of paper really tightly. One light blue and one dark blue. Now unwrap them. And to highlight the creases in the paper, dip a sponge into white paint and gently brush across the paper, making sure you go all the way to the edges. And when it's dry, Take the light blue paper and cut out a mountain. But be careful because scissors are sharp. Ooh, yeah. Now to cut an easy mountain shape, simply cut upwards and then downwards and then upwards again to make little triangle shapes. Now do the same on the dark blue paper but start lower down the page. Next, stick the light blue mountain onto another piece of coloured paper. And stick the dark blue mountain on top. Now, take a piece of white paper and tear out a rough rectangle shape like this. Now stick this to the bottom of the picture, making sure that the ripped edge is at the top. There! 
What a fantastic snowy mountain scene. Now all it needs are some fir trees and a log cabin. Tear out some triangles, squares and rectangles from some brown paper and some smaller pieces for the details. Now arrange all the pieces however you want. This is the log cabin. Now very carefully cut three more triangles out of green paper. And add three small squares of brown paper to make the trees. There! Now stick everything down with glue. Fantastic scrunched paper pictures! And there are lots of other ideas you could try too. How about a volcano? It's made by scrunching red paper and rubbing grey paint over the scrunches. Or a surf picture. It's made by scrunching light blue, dark blue and green paper, then cutting out wave shapes and sticking a surfer on top. So why don't you try making your own picture with... scrunched up paper! It's Minute Make Time! Come on, everyone! <laughs> Here's what we're going to make today. A straw rocket! Three, two, one, blast off! <laughs> Whoa, look at it go! Now, to make a straw rocket like this one here, you will need a square of flame-coloured tissue paper, a circle of tissue paper, two triangles of coloured paper, a glue stick and a drinking straw. Mmm, tasty. Now, do you think it's possible to make this in just one minute? You're on another planet. <laughs> That's true, Toki, but I still think I can do it. Now, I'm going to have to be very quick, but don't worry, I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Are you ready? Let's make it in a minute. Start the clock. Right, the first thing to do is to get our square of tissue paper and tear out the flame for our rocket. There we go, there's a strip there. And now get one of the triangles. I'm going to put some glue here so I can stick on our flame. Oh, I've got to be quick. I've got to be quick. There we go. Right, and now I'm going to turn this over and get the circle. Put some glue on that as well. This is going to decorate there we are, the triangle's decorated now. Halfway! Halfway already? Oh no, I'm going to run out of time. Right, I'm going to put that down there, the straw's in place. Now I need to put on plenty of glue. Oh, I need some more glue. Come on, glue, don't fail me now. There we go, put that round there and some glue round there. Oh no, not long now. I need my other triangle to seal it all in place. There we go. Ten seconds, oh no! If I stick it all down like that. I have done it! I did it, Toki! Only just! That was close, Toki, but here it is. My straw rocket made in a minute. Shall we launch it? OK, here we go, everyone. Three, two, one. We have blast off! Whoa! And if you've got more than a minute, you could make some other straw rockets. This one's a star shape with a silver trail and glitter on it. Look at this one, too! This one's a superhero with a cape! Super Mr Maker to the rescue! Whoa, look at him go! Why don't you blast off with a straw? Here's a reminder of how to do it! Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. To make a straw rocket, tear some tissue paper and glue it to one of your paper triangles. Turn it over and glue on a different coloured paper circle. Put some glue down two edges of the other triangle. Sandwich the straw between the two halves and blow the straw, launching your straw rocket into the air. Why don't you make it in a minute? Just one more on top. There we go! Look, it's the world's first colourful scouring pan tower! Oh, it's taken me ages to build this. Now, I better put it in the doodle drawers. Right, easy does it. Easy does it. There we go. Right, uh, now, open please! Oh. oh, thank you. 
Right, there we go. That's it. Right, let's get them all in. That's it. Now, hopefully, if I give it a push, they'll all squeeze in. <laughs> Well, so much for my tower. <sighs> Hang on. I didn't know that these pads stick to each other. Oh. oh, that's really clever. And it's given me a great idea. Let's make something. A super sticky picture made with colourful kitchen scouring pads. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. <laughs> A piece of cardboard. Some gloopy PVA glue. Scissors and a paintbrush. And some kitchen scouring pads. Phew! Whoa! Now, to make your very own super sticky picture, like this one here, First, take your piece of cardboard and completely cover it in gloopy glue. Whoa! Now, it's easier to do this if you use a paintbrush. There. Now we can take four dark-coloured scouring pads and put them on top. Now, don't worry if the pads overlap the edge of your card for now. You can always carefully trim them later. And when it's dry, you can put your sticky board to one side, because now we need to make a sticky picture to go on our sticky board. You can do anything you like, but I think we should do a space scene. Look at that. Now, let's take a different coloured scouring pad, maybe this one, and cut out a rectangle shape, which will be the body of our rocket. Be careful, though, because scissors are sharp. Woo. Now, we also need two smaller rectangles, here and here. These are going to be the rocket's boosters. And we need a half-circle shape that's been cut in half again for our planet. Now we're going to cut out a triangle for the top of the rocket, a small rectangle for the rocket's base, and some circles for the planet's craters. You can choose whatever colour you like, but I think we should use red. Yes. Great! Now let's choose another colour. How about... Blue! Let's cut triangles for the rocket's wings and small circles for the windows. And if your fingers get tired from all that cutting, then give them a little rest and let them do whatever they want. better. Now, with a white or yellow scouring pad, how about we cut out a moon for the sky, some stars, and a thin oval ring around our planet? Now we can arrange our picture. And remember, the great thing about these sticky pads is they don't need any glue. They just stick together. Watch. What a great effect. And the great thing about this sticky board is that all the pieces stick together. Fantastic! And the other good thing about making a sticky picture is that you can rearrange your pieces whenever you want. Or you could even cut new ones. How about a super sticky scouring pad train on a yellow background? 
And why not try a super sticky lion on a blue background? Aren't they great? Super sticky scouring pad pictures that you can arrange however you like. Time to go! I'm just looking through my seaside box. It's full of all the things I take with me when I go on holiday. Let's have a look. Uh, yes, here's my bucket and spade. Very nice. What else have we got? Oh, brilliant! Look, my mask and snorkel. <laughs> and of course, not forgetting my beach ball. Brilliant! Oh, look, there's also lots of shells in here too. Now, I found this one when I went diving under the sea. I said I love swimming under the sea. Yeah, and it's given me a great idea. Let's make something. A super shimmering shell grotto that looks like it's on the bottom of the sea. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. Some shells. Some paint. A paper plate. Some gloopy PVA glue. And some glitter and a black pen. Ooh. Plus, we'll also need some air drying clay that you can get from an art and craft shop. I'll be back in a tick. <coughs> right, I'll put our air drying clay there for now. Now, to make your very own shell grotto, like this one here, you need to push some air drying clay onto a paper plate like this. Now we're ready to bring in our shells. Now, there are all sorts of different types, but it's a good idea to use a good mixture of shapes and sizes. Now, let's start placing them into the clay. Let's start with the biggest shell, and we can push it into the clay at the back like this. You can arrange the other shells however you like, and then leave the clay to dry. <laughs> When the clay's dry, like this, you can paint your shell grotto a nice underwater colour, like a purple, a green, or maybe even a blue. Now, to do that, we need to make a painty mixture that's half paint and half gloopy glue. There we go, let's give it a mix. There. Now we can paint this painty mixture over a shell grotto. And how about adding a few highlights with a shiny colour? Now, silver paint will work really well for this. So let's bring in some silver painty mixture and paint some on. There. And now, whilst the paint's still wet, let's sprinkle some colourful glitter all over a shell grotto. Now, the glitter will stick because the paint is still wet and it will make the grotto really sparkle. Now, it's a good idea to do this on some old paper, some newspaper or a tray, as this can get a bit messy. <laughs> then shake off all the extra glitter for this amazing effect. There. Now, for the windows, we can use a black pen to draw squares on our shelves and then we can paint them yellow in the middle. You can do as many windows as you want. Just draw little black squares and then paint them yellow. What a brilliant effect! A fantastic shimmering shell grotto and you can try any design you like. This one's covered in green paint and green glitter. 
Or how about using a bigger shell and adding some more shell buildings like this? Let's go! Ooh, it's time to go! Now, take a look at this. This is a really simple way to turn any picture into a winter picture. It's very easy to make, but looks so good, you'll be able to frame it. You will need some dark blue paper, PVA glue, paint brushes, coloured paint and a black pen. To make your winter picture, start by drawing the edge of the ground onto the blue paper using a black pen. Then add the outline of a house. You could add a fence and maybe a tree. It's time to add some colour. Let's use yellow and red for the house and green and brown for the garden. Now add white paint with a small paintbrush wherever snow would fall. The top of the roof, along the edge of the windows, on the fence and on top of the tree. Don't forget the grass. Let's dab some falling snow in the background. And there you have it. A beautiful winter picture. What a brilliant picture! Why don't you have a go? And then... Frame it! Isn't that effective? Now for something really special. Again, I'm just putting all of my sponges away. Ooh. Now, I hope there's enough room over here in my doodle drawers. Right, come on then, open up. Oh, that's good, right. Oh, oh well, that's nice, isn't it? Uh, what about you, Mr Lizard? Open up. That's good. Yeah, very funny doodle drawers. Come on, open wide. That's better. Now, no more funny business, all right? Here we go. Get in there. That's it. Ooh. Here we go. Right. Ooh, there we go. Much better. <laughs> oh, pardon you, doodle drawers. Yeah, that's not a good sign. I must have filled you up. <laughs> hey, what's that? Huh? Oh, well, it doesn't matter. You can make some great things out of sponges. This gives me a great idea. Try using sponges to make a brilliant sponge picture. Let's make it! As well as sponges, we'll need some other things from the bursting doodle drawers! Some cardboard. Some scissors. Some chalks. And some gloopy PVA glue. Phew! Whoa! Now, to make your very own sponge building picture, like this one here, take your cardboard and colour it in with yellow and red chalks to make a sky. It's a good idea if you start with a big red sun in one of the corners. And then do the rest of the sky. <laughs> that looks great! Make sure you leave a gap at the bottom. And you'll see why now, because it's time to start arranging a sponge building. Let's start with a big rectangle sponge and let's put it there at the bottom of our picture. Now let's get two smaller rectangle sponges and put those either side of the big one. And now, oh yes, how about another different coloured rectangle sponge on top of the big one to make a door. Now we need to make roofs for our buildings and for that we could use two rounded sponges like this. Now it's a good idea if these sponges are different colours. Now we're going to cut the top off this one and the top and the bottom off this other one. Now remember that scissors are sharp so be careful and ask an adult to help you. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Now we've got three roof shapes. Put the two matching roofs either side of the big sponge and the bigger roof right in the middle on top of the big sponge. There, 
Now get another rectangle sponge in a different colour and very carefully cut it into two thin strips. Now place these pieces at the bottom of your smaller buildings here. Now all that's missing are the windows and the doors. Now you need to cut out a door shape like this with a pointy roof. And how about three small square window shapes like that? Now it looks good if the windows and the doors are a different colour. Now carefully cut these out and again you could ask an adult to help you. Right, let's put these in place. Put that one there. Fantastic! And when you're happy with all your sponge pieces, you can glue them down onto the cardboard. And when it's dry, you're all finished! But you could try all sorts of other buildings. How about a castle? It's got sponge towers and turrets. Or even a really big city picture using lots and lots of sponges. Aren't sponges brilliant? You can never have too many of them. No. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh. <gasps> or maybe you can. It's Minute Make Time! <laughs> it's Minute Make Time and here's what we're going to make today. A surprise spring bug! It's a bouncy <laughs> bug that pops up to say hello. Now, to make one of these, you will need an old plastic pot with a lid, like one of these here, any shape or size will do, two different coloured strips of card, a pom-pom, a glue stick, and we'll also need some googly eyes that you can get from an art and craft shop. I'll be back in a tick. <coughs> I've got them. There are our googly eyes. Now, do you think it's possible to make this in just one minute? No way! Well, let's find out. I'm going to have to be very quick, but don't worry, I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Let's make it in a minute. Start the clock! Right, let's get our two strips and put them together like that in an L shape. And then get some glue and stick them together. Now, we're going to make a paper spring by folding over one way and then the other way and then one way and then the other way all the way along until we've got our spring. Right, I've got to go as quick as I can. Now this can be a bit tricky, so you might want to ask an adult to help you. Faster! I'm going as quick as I can, Toki! There we go. Now if I put a big dollop of glue on the end here, like that, and then we can put our pom-pom on top there. Now let's give him some eyes. There we go, there's one eye there, and then there's another eye. Let's stick him on. There we go. There. Now, if we get our pot and put some glue in there, we can put our surprise bug inside and close the lid. Only just. Phew, that was close. Now let's have a look inside. <laughs> <laughs> Only kidding, I knew you was in there really. And if you've got more than a minute, you can make some other surprise spring bugs. This one's got three eyes and eyelashes made out of paper. Or you could put two bugs in one box for double the surprise. A surprise spring made in a minute. Give it a go. Here's a reminder of how to do it. Why don't you try making it in a minute? <coughs> a periscope! <coughs> oh yes, shipmates. I can see land. I can see... Wait a minute, who's that? <coughs> oh, it's 
you! I was just playing behind the sofa. I'm pretending that this is my submarine, and I'm the submarine captain! Yeah, look, I've even got my own periscope. This helps me find things. I'm looking for my lost pencils at the moment. Yeah, maybe you can help me and my submarine find them. OK, let's do it. Right, I'm coming back aboard. Dive, dive, dive! <laughs> Where are they? Well, they're not on the table. No, that's empty. Oh, well, no, they're not on there. Hang on a minute. Zoom in, please. Hooray! We found the pencils. Thanks for your help, everyone. That was great fun. And it's given me a great idea. A super submarine that's also a pencil case. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the Doodle Drawers! <laughs> a plastic fabric conditioner bottle with a nice wide neck and... a lid. A washing ball with a flat bottom. Plastic containers and pots. Some paint, some tissue paper and a black pen. And some masking tape and some gloopy PVA glue. Whoa! Now, to make your very own fantastic submarine pencil case, like this one here, you first have to get an adult to help you thoroughly clean and dry out a fabric conditioner bottle and all of the other plastic containers. Now, make sure you've got a plastic pot with a lid, like this one here and also a small plastic bottle with a flip-up lid like that. Let's start putting all of our bits together. Let's put the fabric conditioner bottle here. That's going to be the main body of our submarine. And let's put the pot on this end here at the back. There we go. Now let's take the washing ball and put it on the end of that pot. And how about the plastic bottle with the flip-up lid? That can go up here, because that's where our periscope's going to be. And so our pencil case can stand up. Let's put the lid on the bottom there. Great! Everything looks in position now, so we can stick it all together with some masking tape. Now, you can put on as much tape as you like to do this, but make sure that you don't put any tape over this open end of the washing ball, because that's where all our pencil sharpeners and rubbers are going to go. Now we can cover it in a layer of gloopy glue and tissue paper. Now you could use strips of yellow tissue paper, like this, or any colour you like, really. Now the more layers of tissue paper you put on, the better it will look. Add as many layers as you want, and then leave it to dry. And when it's dry, you can paint on some details. How about some porthole windows and some stripes on the side? Now, cover your plastic lids with a special mixture that's half paint and half gloopy glue. Let's give it a mix. Finally, when your submarine is all nice and dry, you can add some extra details with a black pen. <laughs> Doesn't it look great? Now, all we need to do is pop some pencils into our new submarine pencil case. And I know just where those pencils are. Won't be a tick. I've got them. Now, we can put anything we like in our new pencil case. We could put big things like these pencils in this end. And we could put smaller things like these rubbers in this end. Fantastic! Now I'll never lose them again! <laughs> Where have they gone this time? Now, take a look at this. 
It's a brilliant sunset picture made using paint and torn paper. It's very easy to do and makes a picture that looks so good you'll be able to frame it. You will need white and black paper, some red, orange and yellow paint and some glue. To make a sunset picture, start off by painting the top of the white paper in red paint. Now paint the middle of the paper in orange paint. It's okay if the colours mix in with each other, it's all part of the effect. Then paint the bottom of the paper in yellow paint. Doesn't it look lovely, just like a sunset? Now leave it to dry. Here's the clever bit. Start tearing the black paper into shapes to go in front of your sunset. This is going to be a mountain. Let's stick it down with glue at the edge of the picture, like this. Let's make one for the other side. Right, here's the prickly bit. Tear some more black paper to look like a cactus to put in the middle of the picture. Stick that down as well. You can add anything you like, really. How about a rock? And some clouds. It's a beautiful sunset. What a fantastic picture. Now all that's left to do is frame it. I like making pictures out of all sorts of things. Now take a look at this. What a brilliant picture! Why don't you have a go? And then... Frame it! Let's make a picture out of beads. Wow! Wow! What could it be? Any ideas? It's a truck! That's amazing! And so's this.